In this video, I'm going to teach you how to factor a trinomial using something called the box method. Now, uh, as I do this method, I'm going to be referring to the coefficients by letter. So I need you to understand that the first coefficient is known as A, the second coefficient is known as B, and the third coefficient is C. So the box method begins with a product and a sum. Now product means something times something. And sum, of course, means something plus something. Now the product has to equal a times c, which in this case is negative 21. So just for the sake of our notes, let's just label this ac. Now the sum has to equal b, which in this case is 20. So I got this from simply b. Now the trick is these two numbers have to be the same pair for the product and the sum. All right, so I think it's easiest to start off with the product. Um, so looking at the 21, all right, this is going to be fairly straightforward because um, if we analyze the number 21 and think uh, what times what makes 21, there's only a, a couple of choices. We can either do 1 times 21 or 3 times 7. These are the only ways to multiply and get 21. Um, but next, jump down and look at the sum. The sum has to be 20. And we can control what the signs are. We can go positive or negative. Which one of these pairs can we use to end up with 20? Well, um, we can use the 1 and the 21 if we choose the signs correctly. Uh, we want a positive 20 result. So if we do a positive um, 21 and a negative 1, negative 1 plus 21 is positive 20. So it has to be the same two numbers for the product. So that means I'm, I would have to use negative 1 times 21 for the product. And I see that negative 1 times 21 is negative 21. So we've done it. We have a product and a sum uh, involving the same numbers. Okay, so now we're going to use those numbers to do the box method. So um, here are the boxes that I'm going to use in the box method. So first, um, the 7x squared just goes in the first box as it is. The negative 3 goes in the very last box as it is. Now, here's where the negative 1 and the 21 come in. They are going to go in these two boxes, and it really doesn't matter um, which one you put where. So I'll go ahead and put negative 1 here, and I'll put the 21 here. And these will both be x terms. Okay, so next I need to find the GCF of each row and each column. Um, so let's start with the first row. What is the greatest common factor of the first row? Well, they're both divisible by 7, so I'm going to have a 7. And they both have at least one x, so I'm going to have an x. So the GCF is 7x. Now, looking at the second row, um, these terms have nothing in common. They're not divisible by the same number, and they don't have any variables in common. So, in general, um, if there is no common factor other than 1, we just put a 1 for the GCF. Um, however, if the first term is negative, go ahead and include that negative sign with the GCF. All right, now let's do the columns. So um, numerically, they have nothing in common, all right, 7 and 1. Um, so I'm not going to have any number part in my GCF. However, uh, they both do have x's in common. So they both have at least one x. So the GCF is simply x. Since the first term is positive, I'll leave that positive. 
Now looking at the second column, uh, both of these are divisible by three. So I'm gonna have a three in this uh, GCF. Uh, they don't have X's in common, so there will be no variable. Since the first term is positive, I'm going to leave this as a positive. So uh, looking at these expressions on the sides of the box that I just created, that's actually going to give me the answer. Because um, on the left side, I now have 7x minus 1. And across the top, I now have x plus 3. Let's practice that again. Uh, this problem has one extra step to it. Because we have this negative sign in the front, we need to take that outside of parentheses before we do the rest of the problem. So um, if I factor out a negative 1, basically, OK, if I take this negative sign outside of parentheses, that will leave me with 6x squared plus 13x minus 5. It will just change all the signs. So uh, when I get down to the final answer, that just means I'm going to have this extra negative sign in front. OK, so for the rest of the problem, I can really just uh, ignore the negative sign and just use what's inside the parentheses. OK, so that means um, my A, B, and C will be 6, 13, and negative 5. So remember, the box method starts off with a product and a sum. The product comes from A times C. So that's going to be negative uh, 30. OK, so this negative 30 came from doing A times C. The sum comes from B, which in this case is 13. OK, so let's start with the product. Let's start with 30. Let's think of all the things we could multiply together to get 30. So of course, I'll just start with 1 times 30. Um, how about the number 2? Two? 2 goes into 30 15 times, 2 times 15. Of course, 3 goes into 30, because that would be 3 times 10. Um, but thinking of my multiplication facts, I also know that 30 is 5 times 6. So these are all the ways I can multiply and get 30. Um, but using the same pair of numbers, I have to be able to add and get 13. Now, I can make these positive or negative um, as I want. So um, which of these pairs can help me get the number 13? There are actually two different pairs that could give me 13 if I choose the signs right. Um, hopefully, you can see that I could get 13 out of 2 and 15 uh, if I had negative 2 and, 15 and positive 15. Or I could get 13 out of 3 and 10. If I have positive 3 and positive 10, then that's 13. Um, so let's just look at each one of them. Let's look at 2 and 15 first. So I want positive 13. So if I have a negative 2 and a positive 15, that would give me 13. Um, so I would have to use the same numbers for the product. So negative 2 and positive 15. Um, does negative 2 times positive 15 equal negative 30? Yes. So that means this is the one that we're going to use and not 3 times 10. OK, so remember, um, in the first box, you just put this first term. So in the first box, I'm going to put 6x squared. In the last box, I put the last term. So I'm just going to go ahead and put negative 5. In the other two boxes, I'm going to put the two numbers that we just found in, for the product and the sum. I'm going to put negative 2, and I'm going to put positive 15. And those will both be x terms. And then I do the GCF. I'm going to do the GCF of the rows and the GCF of the columns. The GCF of the top row 
is going to be 3x. Both of these are divisible by 3, and they both have at least 1x. Um, now, the GCF of the bottom row. Well, look, these uh, 2 and 5 are not divisible by the same thing. Um, and they don't have any variables in common. So that means that the GCF is simply the number 1. However, since the first term is negative, let's call it a negative 1. Now let's do the rows. Both of these are divisible by 2, and they both have at least 1x. So the GCF is 2x. Now let's look at the second column. Both of these are divisible by 5. Uh, they don't have any variables in common. So the GCF is just 5. And let's go ahead and call it positive 5. So that leads us directly to the answer. In the first set of parentheses, we will have 3x minus 1. All right, I got that, of course, from the left-hand side. And across the top, I have 2x plus 5. So that is how you factor the original trinomial using the box method. Okay, I should say the first step of any factoring problem is always to look and see if there is a GCF. Is there anything that divides into 15, 4, and 35? Nah, this problem does not have a GCF other than 1, so I should uh, proceed. But always remember to check for that um, because, like, for example, on the next problem, you can see that these all have x's, so you have to factor that out. But for now, we're good. Um, so, the box method begins with a product and a sum. The product comes from A times C. Wow, that's going to be a big number. Okay, I had to grab my calculator for that one. That is 525. And again, that comes from A times C. The sum comes from B, which is negative 4. So the sum has to be negative 4. Now, obviously this number is much larger than your multiplication facts. So, you know, if you just do what we normally do and write 525 and then just start going through the numbers like, okay, 1 times five, 525 and like you're going to go down this list, um, that is going to be difficult. So there's something special that I do when the numbers are this big to help me out. And uh, it involves a factor tree and it's called prime factorization. So maybe you've seen a factor tree before. You can start off with anything you want, something times something that equals 525. We might as well start off with the numbers that gave us this big number in the first place, 15 and 35. That's how we got 525. So we know that 525 uh, factors as 15 times 35. Now we can just continue to split these up as far as we can. So for example, 15 can factor as 3 times 5. Now these are prime numbers which cannot be factored any further, so I'm going to circle those. Um, 35 can factor as uh, 5 times 7, and these are prime numbers. Okay, so this is the prime factorization of 525, uh, 3 times 5 times 5 times 7 equals 325. Now, this will help me figure out all of the ways that I can factor uh, 525 um, because I can basically mix and match these numbers um, to make more numbers. So, for example, because of this prime factorization, I know that 525 is divisible by 3. Okay? And really, I know it's going to be 3 times, like, all of this. Um, but what I could do in my calculator, I can just go 525 uh, divided by 3. 
Okay, so that's 175. Okay, um, next I know that 5 uh, goes into 525. So I can do 525 divided by 5. And that's 105. Okay, next I see that 7 goes into 525. So I'll just do 525 divided by 7. Okay, so that makes 75. All right, but wait, there's more. Um, after that, I can start doing pairs of these. So for example, I can see that, um, well, looking at this first pair, uh, 3 times 5. Um, that's 15. So that tells me that 15 is a factor. Uh, of course, I knew that um, because of these as well. Uh, but 15 is a factor. So that means I can do 525 divided by 15. Okay? Okay. So of course we knew 15 times 35 because that's where it came from. Um, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and add that to our list though. So 15 times 35. Okay, um, but look what else. We can make another pair. Okay, look at these two. 5 times 5 is 25. That means 25 goes into 525. Okay, so 525 divided by 25, um, that's 21. Okay, um, so that's how you can generate a list when the number is very large. Uh, I recommend doing a factor tree so you can get the prime factorization and then uh, mix and match those numbers to find all of the uh, ways that you can factor that big, big number. So now we can go back to the process. Um, so we found all the products, but we need to find the pair that could give us negative four um, if we add them together. Remembering that we can control the signs, uh, they can be positive or negative. Um, so hopefully you can quickly notice that the only pair that can give me uh, negative 4 is this pair because these are 4 apart. So if I choose the signs correctly, um, let's see, so if I want negative 4 then that means I need negative 25 and positive 21. That would make negative 4. Okay, um, but then I need uh, negative 25 and positive 21. Oh, look, when I first wrote a times c, I should have written negative 525 because this is 15 times negative 35, so that's negative 525. So this is working out great because negative 25 times positive 21 is negative 525. So we've done it. So now we can go ahead and use these numbers. So remember, uh, in the first box, you put the first term. So this is simply going to be 15 x squared. In the last box, you put the last term. So I will put negative 35 here. In the other two boxes, I use the numbers that we just found. So I'll put uh, negative 25 x and positive 21 x. Now I do the GCF of each row and each column. So the GCF of the first row, um, well, let's see. Both of these are divisible by 3, and they both have at least 1x. All right, you always go with the variables. You always do the lower amount. So the GCF is 3x. Um, now, both of these are divisible by 5, so um, that's going to be part of it. And, uh, well, they don't have any variables in common. So the GCF is 5. But since the first term is negative, let's call it negative 5. Now let's do the GCF of the first column. 
These are both divisible by 5. And uh, they both have at least one x in common. All right, you just go with the lower amount of x's. Now, both of these are divisible by 7. And they don't have any variables in common. Okay, so this will be plus 7 since this first term is positive. So this is going to give me the answer, okay, which is written far away. You know what, I'm just going to write it right here while it will fit on the screen. So the answer is going to be 3x minus 5 times 5x plus 7. So that is how you factor uh, this trinomial using the box method. Now the first step of factoring is always to look for a common factor and if there is one pull out the GCF. So this problem definitely has a common factor. Not among the numbers, 17 is prime, it can only be, div div uh, <laughs> it can only be divided by 1 and 17. But x, all of the terms have x's. Um, so I go with the lower amount, which is x. So I'm definitely going to factor that out. So if I take x out, put it in the front, uh, of course that means I have to divide everything by x. Should have left myself a little bit more room, but I'm going to squeeze it in anyway. Uh, that tells me what goes inside the parentheses. So this will be 15x squared as it decreases by 1. And this is going to be plus 17x and then minus 18 because these cancel out completely. So when it comes down to my final answer, uh, I know I'm going to have that GCF in the front. And then I will go on and do the rest of the problem using the box method. Okay, so now I'm concentrating on the 15x squared plus 17x minus 18. So as we've done on the previous three problems, I know that factoring by the box method begins with a product and a sum. All right, the product comes from a times c. So this is going to be another big number. Man, these big numbers, guys. Um, somebody's trying to test us. Okay, so what was that? 15 times 18. Two hundred and seventy. Okay, uh, and it's really fifteen times negative eighteen, so that means the product has to be negative two hundred and seventy. All right, uh, because this number, the product, always comes from a times c. Now the sum always comes from the b value, so the sum has to be seventeen. All right, and that comes from the b value. So it's time to make a list uh, as best we can. Let's look at this 270 and analyze it. And we need to find all of the numbers that multiply together to give you 270. So let's start off the list with 1 times 270. Now, again, um, when I have a big number, I like to do the prime factorization. So um, I'm, I'm accidentally noticing what the answer is going to be, but let me follow through for a second. The prime factorization is something I do whenever I have a really big number. And uh, I know that I got 270 by doing 15 times 18. 15 times 18. So I can start with that, and then I can split these down further. So this would be 3 times 5. Okay, these are prime numbers. I'm going to circle them because that's the end of the line. And then 18 is 3 times 6. Uh, but then 6 is 2 times 3. Okay. So that means that the prime factorization, I think I'll squeeze it in right here, is 2 times, and I have three threes, so 2 times 3 
times 3 times 3 times 5. All right, so if I needed to, I could use these numbers. Uh, I could just match them up in different ways to come up with um, all of the factors of 270. So um, let me just follow the process because it's good practice, even though I can already see what the answer is going to be. Um, so I could do 2 times something, all right, because uh, I see the 2 right here. I, it's an even number. So what's 270 divided by 2? All right, that's 135. So 2 times 135. I see the 3 in there, so um, I could get that going. So I could do 270 divided by 3. That's going to be 90. So I've got 3 times 90. OK. Um, now, I see 5 is on the list. So let's go ahead and get that out of the way. How many times does 5 go into 270? So 270 uh, divided by 5. So that's 5 times 54. OK? Um, every time I do a pair, I'm asking myself if I could make 17 out of it. So far, no, I can't. So I've used up all the numbers on the list. So now I start to do combinations. Uh, I'm going to start with the smallest numbers I can possibly make. Um, for example, I, w I have 2 times 3. So that would make 6. So that means 6 is a factor. So let's see what happens there. So 270 uh, divided by 6. That's 45. OK, um, still not making 17. So um, let's see, what's another number I could make if I do pairs? OK, so I had 2 times 3. Um, what about 2 times 5? OK, um, actually, let me not skip 3 times 3, because 2 times 5 is 10. That's coming. Um, but I could do 3 times 3, that's 9. So that tells me that 9 is on the list. So let's see what happens with 9. Okay, so 270 divided by 9 uh, is 30. So I've got 9 times 30. Uh, well, I put 39 by mistake. Either way, that is not going to make 17. OK, um, so what else can I make? So uh, like I mentioned for a quick second there, I could do 2 and 5. All right, I could do that pair. That makes 10. So that tells me that 10 is on the list. OK, so you sh definitely should not need a calculator for this. But 270 divided by 10, of course, that's going to be 27. OK, now I look back to see, if, could I make 17? Wait a minute. I think this is going to be it. If we do 27 minus 10, right, if I have a negative 10, um, that makes 17. So we have now found it. So I can stop making this list now. All right, and honestly, um, right back at the beginning, uh, I noticed that uh, 270 is 27 times 10. And I noticed that that worked. But um, if maybe you wouldn't notice that. So I wanted to show you how you could go through the process step by step. So anyway, now that we, now we have the 10 and the 7, we can keep going. Uh, sorry, the 10 and the 27. Um, so I need a positive 17. So I'm going to go 10 plus negative 20. No, why did I say that? Uh, I'm going to go negative 10 and positive 27. OK, because that will make positive 17. Now I have to use the same numbers for the product. So negative 10 times 27. And that is, in fact, negative 270. So uh, this works. We've got it. 
Okay, so now, as far as the box method, the first term goes in the first box. And again, I'm using the trinomial in the parentheses. So I'm going to go ahead and put 15x squared. The last term goes in the last box, so I'm going to put negative 18 right here. And then comes the two numbers I just found. So I'm going to put negative 10 and 27 in the other boxes. And these will both be x terms. So to get the actual answer, uh, I'm, I, need to do, I need to do the GCF of each row and the GCF of each column. Now, uh, both of these are divisible by 3. Um, so I'm going to bring out a 3. Both of these have at least 1x. So the GCF is 3x. Now down here, both of these are divisible by 2. And that's it. They have no variables in common. Because the first term is negative, I'm going to go with negative 2. Now let's do the columns. Both of these are divisible by 5. So I'm going to go ahead and put the 5. They both have at least 1x. So the GCF is 5x. Both of these are divisible by 9. Uh, 3 is not the GCF. 9 is the GCF. So I'm going to put plus 9. They have no x's in common, so it's just 9. And this gives me the answer. So um, the first factor is the 3x minus 2. And then the second factor is the 5x plus 9. OK, so that's why the final answer will be x times uh, 3x minus 2 times 5x plus 9. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.